God gave me an illustration of a building. The recording has started. In this building, we're dealing with multi-stories. Let's say it's five stories high. Before the building is laid, and the building's going to hold a lot of people, hundreds and hundreds of people. So when the building is laid, the first thing that must be laid is the foundation, right? Oh, God, thank you. As we're building the foundation, before you can mix the concrete and get all that ready and stir it up and pour, the first thing you have to do is break up all that fallow ground. You have to break up the ground. That's what God does in our lives. The first thing he does when we get saved is he breaks up the old. He crushes it. There goes the crushing process again. He crushes it. And all the old cement and all the old rocks and all the old boulders and the weeds and the plant life and the trees, all the land has to be cleared. Now, while he's clearing these, these, the land, he's getting rid of all the debris. He's moving it all totally out of the way. Now, there are times, and I've seen this happen, there may be use for some of that broken up, for some of the broken up boulders from what was there before. Just like for you, God will use your old wounds, your old memories, some of the old things that even though you have turned your back on them, God may use it as a tool one day when he's ready to use you. But right now, we're moving it out of the way. All right? Now, the next thing they have to do is soften the soil, don't they? And they have to bring out the, the, I think they're surveyors or whatever, and they have to measure where the leveling and, you know, where everything is perfectly at a, at a perfect angle so that the land is perfectly level. And then they have to bring in the bulldozers or whatever, whatever these things are, where they are leveling and, and compacting the land because the land has to hold the weight of the foundation and the foundation has to hold the weight of the building. So the first thing God is going to do is prepare you and prepare your foundation. And this is what comes with the foundation and the preparation of the land, compacting all that soil to hold all the weight that God has coming your way down through the years and decades. The first thing he starts to do is chip away at your shell, the shell that you used when you were unsaved, that phony shell with the phony mask and the phony costume and the phony wigs. This is all allegorical, so don't go literal on me. And what God is doing is removing all of that because the first thing he has to get you to know is you. He introduces you to the real you, not the phony you that you have cultivated in the world and in sin. No, he introduces you to the real you, the good, the bad, and the ugly that you can't Stand to deal with because the part that you can't stand the most is the vulnerable you. It doesn't mean that you're all that bad, but you're vulnerable and you have built up these shells and these, these armors and all this, this costume and all, all this, uh, artillery to protect yourself. You build up your walls and you, you've done all this to protect yourself. But no, God has to come and knock all that down because he's going to build you a brand new foundation. While he's clearing your land and he's breaking up that fallow ground, that's what he's doing. He's trashing all that old, 
all your old tools, all your 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 dagger for a tongue, all that cussing and all that hating and all that resenting and all that bitterness and all that fuming, fighting, strife, all of that. He's removing it. All those oversensitive feelings and the hurts and the wounds. He's working on that. That is a continual work in progress for healing. So a lot of times when you get saved, you wonder, why are my feelings getting hurt so much? I used to be able to fight against that mess. No, God wants you to feel it. He wants you to feel it. He's not being cruel. He wants you to feel everything that you go through because it's the only way you get to know who you really are. You know where your weak spots are. You learn where your strengths are. And you learn where you're most vulnerable. And what you end up doing with the vulnerable side of you is presenting it to God so that he can exchange your vulnerableness and your weaknesses with his strength. And as time goes by and you're filled with more and more of his Holy Spirit, people will marvel at how settled and how stable you are. Okay. <laughs> strengthen, establish, settle you. Yeah, okay. So that's what God is doing. And all of this is for the purpose of remaking, rebuilding, healing, and deliverance. And he delivers you he, like he delivered the land from all the old debris. He's delivering you. And part of your foundation, this is the comical part. You know how you can build a building, you can see a building is just sticks and, and wire, maybe the first week, and then two months later, the whole thing is up. Well, guess what? This is what God works on the longest, and this is what will frustrate you with him. God works on your foundation more and longer than the building. That, consider this. That's why Jesus came as a carpenter. He builds. He rebuilds. He, tear down, he tears down. He refurbishes. <sighs> okay. Think about that when life kicks you in the tail. Think about that when people hurt your feelings. Think about that when people say things that are untrue, falsely accuse you, mistreat you. Think about that when you feel rejected and alone, when you feel ostracized, isolated, kicked to the curb. Think about that when you go through anything in life. Because God also works in paradoxes. When you come up in a hateful, mean, vindictive setting, what does God turn you into when you turn your heart over to him? He takes that, that whole land, he clears all that crap out, and he starts to lay your foundation with love, kindness, patience, mercy, understanding, long-suffering. He works in paradoxes. Those that were mistreated the most end up being the most kind people you can find. Those that have been treated with hateful, uh, mean remarks and rejection and put downs and verbal abuse end up being the most encouraging, the most uplifting souls. <laughs> it all comes from God. It all comes from God. Mm. Anyway, and the reason I'm grinning so much is because I experienced everything I'm telling you. And it is just so freeing and so exuberating seeing how God's love
takes away our old. How God's love removes the scars and the ghosts and the skeletons that rattle in the closet. He removes the words of curses that were spoken over us. He removes the rapes, the molestation, the bitter sorrows from those experiences. And he gives us mercy, hearts full of mercy and forgiveness and understanding. Oh. And he gives us more and more love, love that we're not even capable of. He gives that to us. And our hearts, are, are, his love is shed abroad in our hearts. Okay, so now you see the building. Let's move on because I will get I bogged down there because that's my favorite part. The foundation is the most important part. Everything else is like all the goodies on the cake, but the strongest, the, mo the most important, I don't care how beautiful the building is, if it's built on sand, flat, it's gone. First sign of trouble, it's, it's flattened down. I'll still bye-bye, out of here. Okay, so you have to know, you have to work with God to lay that foundation and you have to work with him. You can't just sit there. You got to work with him during the building process. You have to work with him even during the removal of all the old, breaking up that fallow ground. That comes through your tears, your prayers, your repentance. That comes through you seeking God. Okay, we're going to continue. I'm going to break this up so I can upload these without taking all night for each video.